My name is Vincent. In iOS 6731, we are introducing 400 gig DCO in KOS IPDD pluggable form factor. 400 gig DCO is a key component of the Cisco routed optical networking architecture. The Cisco routed optical networking architecture is about simplification and automation. It converges multiple planes of optical TDM and packet layer into a single hop by hop IP layer with segment routing control plane. On the optical side, it uses simple point-to-point -point DWDM, and the transponders are integrated into the routers with 400 gig DCO pluggable optics. The key objectives of the DCO design is to be open and standards-based, so with multi-vendor interoperability. DCO stands for Digital Coherent Optics. Basically, it integrates a transponder into the router for simplification and cost optimization. In the first generation of 100 gig DCO, it was the size of a whole line card and with a very high power consumption. With the advances in technologies such as silicon photonics and high performance DSP with 7nm processes, we are able to integrate a 400 gig DCO into a QSFPDD pluggable form factor with very low power. The use of KSIPDD ensures that we are not sacrificing router port density with integrated DCO. In terms of standards, OIF is the first to come up with 400 ZR coherent standard for simple point-to-point -point 400 gig Ethernet data center interconnect. On the other hand, the Open Rodem MSA has also defined a full-fledged standard with multiple rates, flexible Ethernet and OTN client mapping, and a high performance spec enabling regional and long haul applications. The OpenZR Plus MSA attempts to combine the best of both standards, retaining the simplicity while keeping the multiple rates with high performance spec. This simplification allows 400 gig ZR Plus to be integrated into a QSAPDD pluggable. Cisco and many other vendors are active members of the OpenZR Plus MSA to ensure multi-vendor interoperability. This is a quick summary of the differences between standards. The audience could go through it in more details later, together with the reference readings at the end of this presentation. Please note that the OIF 400Z standard only supports 400 gig transponder mode. However, Cisco does offer an extension for 4 x 100 gig MUX bundle mode. Cisco NCS 5700 series for both modular line cards and fixed platforms will support both ZR and ZR Plus pluggables. In the current 731 release, the 400 gig ZR will be supported first with the release of its mode. In the next XR732 release, we plan to support the 400 gig ZR Plus as well. Indeed, the sum of the references on Cisco.com and the recent Cisco Life 2021. Enjoy your reading. Hello everybody, this is Bernard and I want to talk to you today about the optic support that we are adding under the iOS XR731 release. We have added miscellaneous uh, support for various optics. Um, I want to highlight today three different sets of optics that we've added under 731 and that is the 400 gig ZR type optics, the QSFP 100 gig FR optics and the SFP 10 gig dash ZR dash I. What is 400 gig ZR? ZR for optics are the first time we bring coherent technology to the 400 gig lineup of modules. Coherent is the enabler for long distance uh, transport. In this case, we have two different versions. One being the so-called 400 gig ZR, which covers distances up to 120 kilometers. And one being a 400 gig ZRP, or often called ZR Plus, which can cover distances up to several hundred kilometers, depending on type of modulation. Under 731, we are only going to support the ZR type optics. The ZR Plus or ZRP is going to come with 732. It is important to note that at FCS of 731, we will only have limited support for the 731 optics. And we will later in end of April, early May, release then the SMOO for final general availability GA support. Um, the reason for this being that the modules itself will only go FCS end of May, May. And we need to be able to potentially react to some last minute changes in the optics module firmware. That's why we are looking at a SMOO that is to come then in uh, April timeframe. 
Although these modules are called ZR, which refers to, in common language, distances up to 80 kilometers. These modules can go beyond 80 kilometers, which is nice to, to see. But natively, when you use ZR or ZR plus optics and you want to connect two systems back to back, the maximum you can reach in the basic setup when you just use fiber in between these two nodes is up to 40 kilometers. There is not enough optical budget available to cover natively 80 kilometer of fiber. So you always need to pay attention when you want to use ZR optics. The very moment you get to 40 kilometers or a little bit more, you will need to add an external optical amplifier to the setup. Next thing I want to address is the um, 100 gig FR-S module. The 100 gig FR-S module is important when you want to use the new 400 gig optics in 4x100 gig breakout. And here especially there is the QDD 400 gig dash DR4 module that is organized in 4 times 100 gig. You can use them when you connect them back to back as a single 400 gig channel. But when you want to use breakout, you end up with 4 times 100 gig single wavelengths. And that means on the opposite side of the link, that is where you need the QSFP-100 gig dash FR dash S to detect the signal properly coming from the 400 gig DR4 and thus allow interoperability um, between your node that has the 100 gig interface and your 400 gig optics module in, for example, the Vigor line count. Last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about the 10 gig ZRI. When you look at the compatibility matrix, you will notice that some products, they do not support the classical SFP 10 gig dash ZR or ZR dash S. And the reason being these classical 10 gig modules that offer up to 80 kilometer reach are so-called linear modules. They do require in the host line card a so-called EDC chip, electronic dispersion compensation, to compensate for the fiber effects that add unwanted signals into the transmitted signal. And as such, if you want to go up to 80 kilometers, you need to compensate for these fiber nonlinearities, and this is done via the EDC chip. The fact is that not all hardware does support these modules. Depending on the file chip that is used inside the hardware, they may support ZR optics or not. And as I mentioned in the beginning, when you look at the compatibility matrix, you will see that there are some products that simply do not support ZR and at the same time, they do not support as well the classical 10 gig DWDM modules, the DWDM dash SFP 10 gig dash and then X for the wavelengths. Now with the 10 gig ZR dash I, we are bringing a limiting module to the market that does not require an EDC chip in the host module. With these modules, we can then bring 10 gig ZR reach to the hardware that so far has not been able to support the 10 gig classical 10 gig ZR. There's only one small caveat to the story. The guaranteed reach for these 10 gig ZR I is not 80 kilometers, it is 70 kilometers. That is then linked to the maximum dispersion that these units can compensate. While for this calculation, we are using the maximum dispersion that a fiber can have. Under typical um, applications, you can expect 80 kilometer reach easily. But when we go just by the data sheet of the optical fiber and the data sheet of the optical module itself, that is when we can only guarantee 70 kilometers. That is it. Please take a look at the compatibility matrix and then see you next time for the upcoming 741 release. Thank you very much.